We're going to apply what we've learned to front end estimation and use it in a problem solving scenario. I've got six questions for you that are very practical situations that you may encounter in your lives. The first one here, Mike needed to save $132.23 to buy a remote control truck. This isn't your ordinary remote control truck that you'd get from Toys R Us. This is something high end. To do this, he collected bottles for five days. Here are the amounts that he collected on each day. There they are. And we need to use front end estimation to determine if Mike has enough money. Now, if I asked you, does he have enough money? Give me an exact number. No estimation, just give me an exact value of how much he actually saved up. You would just add these numbers up and if he has $132.23 or more, that means he saved up enough money. But we're not allowed to add these numbers up exactly. We want a quick estimate so that we're not taking our calculator out. We just want to estimate it in our heads very, very fast. So we'd stack them first of all. And we would add them up. However, we need to change these numbers. We need to use our estimation strategies. So the 36 becomes 30. But wait a minute, Mr. Mahlum, it's closer to 40. It doesn't matter because the strategy that I've taught you in the last lesson involves keeping the first number and turning everything else into zeros. It's a very simple strategy. You don't have to think about rounding up or rounding down. You just keep out, you just keep the first digit and you turn everything into a zero after that. So 36 becomes 30, 26 becomes 20. And then you see all the answers here. They all get turned, transformed into these here. That's the conversion. You add them up, you get $130. So that must mean he doesn't have enough saved up, right? Not so fast, not so fast, because think about it. We reduced all of these numbers here. We reduced this, we reduced that, we reduced this, and all of these numbers have been lowered, so even our answer is lower than what it should be. The real answer is gonna be higher than $130, which means the actual amount over here, if I was to add these up, I would get more than this. This is our estimate. Now we need to use some logic and say, well, the real answer is going to be a little bit more than 130. So 132, yeah, it'll probably go past $132 if I added all these up. So yeah, I would say he does have enough saved up. Question two, Mandy has 41 flower vases. She also has 423 long stem roses and 243 stems of baby's breath. That's a kind of flower. Approximately how many stems of each type of flower can she put evenly in each vase? Now think about this. Is this going to be a division question or a multiplication or an addition or a subtraction? She has these flower vases and she wants to put um, the long stem roses and the baby's breath and she wants to split them up among the vote. How many stems of each type can she put evenly in each vase? It's division. She's going to split these roses up. So what I recommend you do is you split up these categories. We've got two types of flowers. And for the roses, we've got 423 of them and we want to divide it among 41 vases. 423 divided by 41, but we need to estimate. So about how many can we put in each vase? If we were to take the roses and split them up, each vase, how much would be in each vase? Well, we'd have to use front end estimation. 423 becomes 400 and the 41 becomes 40. We change both of them, keep the first digit. 40 goes into 400, that's pretty easy, 10 times. 10 times 40 makes 400 and then subtract. So we've got about 10 of those roses can go in inside of each vase. But how about the baby's breath? Well, we have 243 and we're going to divide them among 41 vases. So we put the division symbol. We change this number. We change that number. Keep the first digit, remember. And then we ask ourselves, well, 40 goes into 200 how many times? Five times, that's right, because five times 40 is 200, yes! And then 200 minus 200, zero. So we have about five baby's breath inside of each vase and 10 of the roses inside of each one to make a pretty good looking vase. Here's the third question. A store manager ordered 34 cases of video games. Each case had 42 video games inside. So he's got 34 cases. 
each case has 42 games in it. So imagine 32, we could change this, 34 boxes. Let's call them boxes. And inside of each box, each box, just so no, there's no confusion, has 42 video games inside. If 1,240 people pre-ordered a game, so before the game came up, this many people went to the store and said, we're going to pre-order it so that when they arrive, we're going to be the first people to snatch them. Use front-end estimation to determine if there are enough games available. So the boxes have came in. We have 34 boxes. Each one has 42. That's 34 times 42. We change the 34 into 30. 42 becomes 40. We multiply. Remember the trick here. Multiply these two, you get 12, and then add two zeros beside it, you get 1,200. But wait a minute. The box has 1,200 games, but how many people want games? 1,240. So that must mean we don't have enough, right? No, not quite. Because remember, these here are, this is an estimate. We lowered the numbers. We lowered the 34, we lowered the 42, so we've lowered the answer. The real answer is going to be more than 1,200. How much more? Maybe a little bit more, maybe 1,300 or so. Okay, but chances are we do have enough games. In fact, not chances, we do have enough games. 1,240 is not that much higher than 1,200, and the real answer is going to be much more than 1,200. We do have enough games. Use front-end estimation to calculate the approximate difference of these two numbers. That's not too hard. We're going to take those numbers because we understand difference means subtract. We're going to change this number into 6,000. Where'd the decimal go? The decimal's gone. We don't need it because it's going to be 6, and all these are going to be zeros. So it's going to be decimal 0, 0, and we can just ignore that. This becomes 400. Anyways, put that at all. Okay, is the estimate higher or lower than the actual value? Everybody needs a little bit of a party sometimes. I know, I get it. Is the estimate higher or lower? This is our estimate. It's gonna be lower than the real number, right? Because we lowered this one, we lowered this to that, so we've lowered our answer. It's a low estimate, it's a low end estimate. Use front end estimation to calculate the approximate product of these two numbers. Product meaning multiply. So we're going to underline product. We're going to put a time sign. We're going to take our number, change this one. 1000 decimal zero zero is 1000. Change that one to 40. Multiply the four and the one and then add four zeros. You get 40,000. Is this number going to be higher, is this estimate higher or lower than the actual amount? Since we lowered this number, by now you should be able to do this. You'd be like, Mr. Melm, you don't even have to explain it, Mr. Melm. I get it. We lowered this number. We lowered that number. So our estimate has been lowered compared to the real value. I believe this is the last question. Use front end estimation to calculate the approximate quotient. Ooh, that's a big word, quotient. No, it's not. You know what quotient is. It means divide. To calculate the approximate quotient of these two numbers. So, we will. Scene one, ample, take one. Yes, we will. We're going to convert this number. We're going to convert that number. Scene one, ample, take two. We're going to ask ourselves, 30 goes into 900 how many times? If you count by 30s, until you get to 900, it's going to be 30 times. Because look, 3 times 3 is 9. Add the two zeros. <gasps> you got it, 900. You minus? Zero, so it's going to be about 30. If you divide these two numbers, you won't get exactly 30, but you're going to get pretty close to 30.